Okay, welcome to this uh, new crash course in PDP 10 programming. Uh, this time I should have a co-driver. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Andrew Lowe, also a PDP 10 fan. And I'm Lars Brinkhoff. So uh, this time we're going to do some debugging. And uh, we're going to start with an empty job and everything that doesn't work, that's we're going to debug and fix and make a working program with just the debugger. So we're starting with no jobs at all. I'm going to create a new job. Let's call it hello. And I'm going to use the DDT commands throughout this session, uh, since it's DDT we're using, of course. So I'm going to type escape J and DDT printed this exclamation mark to say it's uh, created a new job for us. So the goal for goal for this session is to make a Hello World program just like we did in Midas the other day. But uh, this time we're going to do it in straight in DDC. So I'm just going to run this program. And if it doesn't work, uh, as it shouldn't, uh, we'll fix that. So I'm going to type escape G, and there isn't even a starting address. So we'll fix that, fix that first. Uh, DDT has uh, something called the sudo locations. They aren't location in the uh, job, but outside the job that's metadata data for the job. So the starting address, that's dot dot start. So we'll open that location by typing slash and it's zero now, so that's obviously wrong. Uh, the conventional address, starting address for an ITS job is 100 octal, so we will type that like so. So that's our first fix, I guess. Uh, so let's run it again. And this time we see uh, DDT stopped at the address 100 with uh, the error illegal operation because Obviously, it's uh, just zero, which isn't a valid operation. Uh, so I think we'll uh, use a nice symbol for this address. We have the value dot, which is always the currently open location, and this is 100 now. So let's type dot and go, and the colon character is a DDT command for defining a new symbol. So now we have go is 100 and we open that. We still have zero, which is no good. So uh, we wanted to do some output, right? So we have to open an, an IO channel. Uh, we should have a nice name for the channel, I think. So we'll use channel one and we'll call it TYOC for teletype output channel. And we still have that location open, so let's type dot open and ty o y o z comma uh, something. We'll fill in this. <clears throat> so let's check it out. Go slash. Oops, wrong. Apparently, uh, oh, uh, no, not at location one either. Okay, so. Let's just redo it open. Okay, now we have one instruction. So let's run this and see what happens. Ali, Irin, Irin. There's something in the background here. Okay, it should be muted now. Um, as you can see, uh, we ended up at the location go plus one. So we are right at the location after the dot open system call. And this means that the system call failed. Obviously we didn't pass any device or file or anything to the open call, so it should fail. And we want to handle this nicely, so we'll type 
dot lows ls uh, The code will be basically the same as in the Midas example. So if you remember that session, we'll just use the same thing here. So this should be an improvement. Let's run this again. Yes, we did get an error, no such device. So we'll need to pass in something sensible to the open call. So let's find some other location, let's say 200, and let's call it TTY or TD. And let's open that location, oops, sorry. And it's empty, of course. So here we'll have to uh, enter something for open to operate on. We'll use the same thing as the other day, dot UAO, unit ASCII output. And that's for the left half word. In the uh, right half word, we'll need the device name. And here's a somewhat tricky DDT command to enter six bit text. <clears throat> um, maybe I should explain six bit is uh, as it says, a six-bit character code, and it's a subset of ASCII with only uppercase characters. So to enter a six-bit value, we'll type escape, one, and single quotes. Whoops, sorry. Let's do that again. Escape one. Sorry. <laughs> There we go. <clears throat> and we might think that saying TTY here should be good. Escape to finish. And let's have a look. But it's still zero. So let's try again right this time. The uh, reason is that uh, the text ends up to the, uh, to the left. So we need to actually enter three spaces for for the upper part of the word. And now TTY. This should be right. And we see some numbers in there. Uh, we can type single quote again. And TTT will type out the value in 6-bit. And we see that it's TT right in there. So that's fine. We have the start, go, and let's fill in that address value, TTY. Is there, okay, a so way, is there a way to just set the right part of a word? Um, probably. I just don't know about it right now. Uh, did he have lots and lots of commands? So it's probably in there somewhere. Maybe you can check it out offline in the meanwhile. Uh, so let's run this. And we ended up at go plus two this time. So that's an improvement. We had the open call, the lows error handler, and nothing. So we are getting further. Hi there, Ilya. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's turn off the video. Okay, uh, so we should be starting some output here. And we'll have to uh, make a byte pointer again. So let's define some uh, symbols for, for the accumulators. One for A, two for B, let's say. And uh, we are going to need a byte pointer, so let's make that now. Let's put it after this. Let's call this PTR pointer. So let's put that magic byte pointer here. And we're going to need a string in the other half here, but let's do that now. So let's call this one, hello. 
and we wrap around. That's what ITS usually do. So let's open hello. And uh, here we have some uh, tricky commands again for entering strings. Uh, this time, escape one double quotes. So we'll enter the text here. Uh, this will only be one word worth of characters. So hello, that's five characters. So let's uh, go on here. Hello, space, world, that's one too many rights. World. And the final part, world. And let's put a new line in here as well. So I'm typing enter here, and I'm actually typing control J there and ending the string. Let's check this out. So we get, uh, DDT is kind of guessing this is an instruction, but we know it's not. So type double quotes. We see the hello there. Double quote again, world, d, and control M, control J. That's the new line. Okay, we have the pointer, which is a topic equal to see the num numerical version. So let's redo this. It should be 4407, and we're going to point the address to hello. So this should be a working string pointer now. We're going back here. We want to load this string byte pointer into an accumulator. So move A, and it's at address PTR pointer, right? So let's enter that. And we still have uh, the output. Let's open Go plus three. If you remember the Midas example, we used increment and load bytes. So let's load into B from A. And we'll have the check for zero, jump E. If B is zero, we'll jump. Let's just keep it zero for now. And we'll need to actually write to the output with the IoT system call. And we'll write B to the output channel. And finally, we need to look back just to go plus three. By the way, let's call go plus three loop because it looks nicer. So let's check out our program. We have the open, lows, byte pointer, load a byte, check for zero, output, and look back. So that looks pretty good. Let's try this. I'm clearing the screen. Yes, we did get hello world. And we did get another illegal operation. <clears throat> of course, we didn't fix that jump E instruction, so we kind of know this, that's at fault, but there's also this uh, jump history feature. So we can open another pseudo location called JPC. That's the uh, location of the last jump. So open that with slash and we see loop plus one. And we can type slash again to open that location. And we see it's the jumpy instruction. And since it wrapped around, it's kind of hard to read, so I'll get there like this. So here we need to jump somewhere sensible. Uh, let's go ahead and put that instruction right after the loop end. So let's call this die. And let's put something here. Uh, I'll diverge from that example we did with Midas here. I don't want to call logout because that will kill our job and we don't even have it saved yet. It's just in in the core image. So I'll use the uh, 
can the debugger version here dot value and let's go back I'm typing the carry character to go up in memory and there we have the jumpy instruction and let's jump to die so this should be pretty much complete now you can actually just set the right part by um, using alt mode um, what's it greater than the right angle bracket and it will complete the rest of the word with what's already there okay let's try this uh, loop plus one what did you sell alt mode that escape for your listeners well first of all you probably want to clear it or actually well maybe maybe uh, insert a, a jump to go or something so uh, delete that first and uh, comma go to uh, let's fix this now then uh what do you want to fix oh okay but that no now uh, let's just fix the uh, the address first okay so uh type comma and now what you type will replace the address part so okay. it will be die Hmm. It's just no, no, die. No, no, no. Uh, you were too fast. I, I think your video was too slow for me. Uh, okay. After you type, you type the new address. Uh, it's alt mode uh, right angle bracket, and then uh, and then deposit. Hmm. Two hundred. Is that no angle it? bracket? The the greater than. Ah, oh, okay. Also the right one, not the left. Oops, sorry, <laughs> the wrong one. Yeah. Now I'm completely lost. Yeah, now it's a bit confusing. <laughs> so alt mode, that is escape and angle brackets. So like this. And now comma. Comma and then whatever address you want. Uh, so it's actually just die, but anyway. Yeah, in this case, uh, hmm. since you messed up the, the word. Um. Yeah, it didn't seem to work right, but never mind. That's not what we're here for today. So, hmm. wow, I'm really lost here. What's happened? OK, we're back. OK, that should be better. Hmm. It's still there somehow. Uh, I don't know what we did there, but something weird. OK, anyway, let's run this now. Uh, still wrong. Why is this? So now we get some actual debugging. Oh, it's still wrong. How about now? OK, that's better. OK, we did get Hello World. We did get the Valret. So I think this actually works now. Uh, so the final thing here, uh, which we maybe should have done before to save our work, is to use Escape Y to actually write this core image to a file. So let's call this yes hello and now we should be able to actually run this as a file by typing hello and the ddt command is control k so it seems to work still and there's our hello world program so uh, that's all i think any comments from you your code drivers. Then Let's get that uh, right address thing working one one time. So if you open loop plus one, hmm. where is it? Oh, okay. I should run hello like this uh, escape. So loop, and we have the jumpy. All right. So tell me, just tell me. Okay. Just now, now comma. And then whatever you want as an address. So let's say uh, something else for now. 
and then alt mode uh, right angle no right angle hmm. i'm not sure it's working now what's and then uh, carry it return uh, i don't think that works <laughs> maybe you entered some weird mode it works perfectly for me but we did change the instruction at least so well, let's uh, practice this another time. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Yeah, I wrote a question in the chat. Uh, the labels you put in there, loop, what? die, right? or whatever, uh, are they stored in the image? So when you load the, the file again, uh, are the, uh, will the labels be still there, or is it just temporary in the DDT session? Yeah, they're they're still they're not in the core image, but in the metadata in the file. So I think we can do this. Something like a symbol table in in, in yes. modern. Okay. Yeah, exactly. There's a symbol table in the file. So here we have all the symbols we defined, and we can even, uh, of course, kill this just to be sure and run it again. And we need to type the escape here to get the symbols. And list symbols, we still have them. And if we kill this and we load hello without the escape, then we kind of get the uh, light version without the symbols. So we have nothing here now, but we can type, we can get them back. Like this. Yeah, so there's some uh, there's a symbol table and some other metadata saved in the file, and uh, DDT of course uh, keeps track of that when you're using the, the debugger. All right. Okay. Cool. Thank you. So I think we'll uh, end it here today to keep it short. Thank you for joining and see you another time.